Hello, and what we got here is the Surround Sound Panner by JL Cooper from the MS, uh, MCS 3000 series. Um, this is the unit here. Um, you can say it's a good unit. Uh, it's pro probably been used three, four times, possibly most. Um, all the lights do light up. Um, these are five rotary encoders uh, that just spin infinitely. Um, this is the joystick, obviously, and it's got the little button to grab when you want to start your writing. And if you want to start automation, you grab it and then move. Um, that's pretty much it. Uh, the unit's heavy. Uh, it's made out of heavy gauge steel, unlike anything you buy besides J.L. Cooper stuff. Um, it's not like the nowadays stuff that you buy and it's plastic and you feel like if you drop it, it's going to break. This is like... Um, metal steel all the way around um, I feel like if you hit somebody with this you could actually do some this could be a weapon and you, you could do some damage with it uh, okay let's go let's see what it does in Pro Tools um, let's get it set up so what you want to do is uh, it also works with uh, other units as well this works with um, the Panasonic WR DA7 the Yamaha O2R little board uh, it's a cool little digital console and the TMD 8000 another cool one um, you just got to set, set the dip switches in the back to the proper settings and um, it'll work with those units flawlessly now we're setting it up with Pro Tools so um, it works with Pro Tools HD mix series systems um, it works with uh, I'm, I'm using it right now with 10.3.7 um, I believe it works with 9 in the same way. Anything before that, I believe you use the legacy controller, which you can download off of um, Digi's site. It's, it's still there. I checked it out. Um, you just drop it in the folder they tell you to drop it to, into for your system, um, whether you're using a Mac or a PC. Um, okay, so with Pro Tools, I need to turn off dip switches 1 and 2 and turn dip switches 3 and 4 on. So the dip switches are located here. I can power down the unit 1 and 2 off. Three and four are already on, so I just leave them. Power it back up, and we should have communication with the Pro Tools. Um, now, my issue with the Pro Tools communication is I am currently using a Roland um, audio interface, which I am sure is not uh, certified with, by Digi or Avid, and um, it is not communicating properly through the MIDI, which, as you can see right here, the MIDI out to MIDI ends. Um, I got it communicating one way, but it's an emulation mode going the other way, which I've checked out online. I went to their forums and it said um, anything that's in emulation mode, essentially, you're going to have some sort of communication issues. I assume once you get uh, this device hooked up to a proper MIDI interface that's not emulated, um, these lights will let you know where the heck you're at. Um, and, and what you're doing. Um, so let's just first prove that this is Pro Tools HD 10.3.7. There it is right there. And my issue with the peripheral setup, um, like I said, I'm using just a standard surround panner that comes with um, uh, Pro Tools. Um, I'm having it re receive from the VS100, the Roland MIDI. To and when I go to MIDI this way, I only get emulation mode. So I'm assuming it's just not communicating properly. Um, however, you do see that it does actually work here where we at. Oh, we're way down the console. Hold on. <laughs> do, 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 do. I thought we were closer. Um, okay, where are we at here? Okay, so. All right, so it does move around um, to play. This is the standard the demo that comes with Pro Tools. Uh, the lead vocal. Um, what you can do with this device is um, mute it. Bring up the PDF real fast. Because uh, these, these, these switches and knobs function, uh, they, they're multi-purpose depending on, on what mode you're in. Um, from moving around the tracks, to the rotary encoders being your front position or your um, divergence controls. 
So they're all the switches and things are labeled and you can see what they are in your PDF. You don't really, once you do it a couple times, you, you kind of learn what they are. Um, so this is the, your standard mode. Let's unmute that. There we got the vocal. Your standard left to right and back and forth and go around the circles, whatever you want to do. Um, if you were doing some, some automation, you'd have to see, you'd have to put the joystick about where you think it is and grab it and then move it. Um, pretty simple to use this right here controls your low frequency if you look on this on the fader up there it's controlling how much this get, get sent to the subwoofer um, this one controls I believe the left to right front and this one will control uh, front to rear send it to the back and this one con controls the left and right rear which is kind of redundant since you have this this does this. This controls the same three knobs, but it, it does it so much more gracefully. Um, so what I like to do is use it in divergence mode, which is by hitting um, S7, and then yes, that enters divergence mode. So now um, I can turn the center channel down. If you watch that center icon right here. I'll turn it down so it doesn't exist anymore. So now if you were to pan across the spectrum left to right, it would not interfere with your dialogue in the center channel or whatever you have in the center channel that is of focus. If you want it to just graze over it a little bit, you turn it up to about 50%, and it'll still go into it, but not as much. Um, if you want to control the sound field, you can control the sound field by setting up your divergence, the width, essentially. Now. Essentially, the sound won't go anywhere wider than um, what I'm controlling in the blue lines. So, so you can control the front and the rear um, with your divergence, right? As well as front to rear divergence. So the smaller I make it, it's not turning, it's actually getting smaller. Now it'll, it'll, it'll share, it won't actually ever go outside this little box. If I pull all the way over here, it's going to sound like it's right here. So I could set it up like this once I get my div divergence the way I want it. And um, I can just pan around like that, knowing it's going to stay inside this box the whole time. Um, that's pretty much the short and skinny of it. Oh, you can uh, mute, obviously, from this. Um, you can cycle through the sends. Um, there's send B send a um, as well as you can grab the uh, the, the uh, pan of the sends or the, the the pan of any other channel that's a that's a, a stereo channel it'll still control the, the pan and the mutes um, you can control the fader from here um, you can control the fader on the channel as well from here uh, so loud uh, it's getting loud oh Okay, back down to normal. Um, that's pretty much it. Oh, stereo channels. That's kind of cool. Uh, check this out. Uh, let's see. Hold on. Right here. Yes. Um, you got the stereo channel. All right. Okay, so you go to your, your stereo channel for the first time. And you're like, oh, wait, it's only doing one side. Okay, so you can either do one side. Hit this button. Control the other side, or what most people do is they'll lock them, and then have this side do the complete opposite, front and back, and rear. So whatever I do, it'll be opposite, which is kind of cool. And since they're locked, if I go to my divergence mode, I can turn the center channel down completely and just have them go around, like in quadraphonic, more or less. Um, so that's pretty much that. Pretty simple. Um, and this one again controls your, your low frequency, just like the other ones, uh, and your fader. So it's um, pretty self-explanatory. Um, works well, good luck on bidding on it, and um, I hope somebody gets it that can enjoy it and use it. Bye-bye.